write the equation for the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of this function. So I like to just, for vertical asymptote, I just call it the VA. That's vertical asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote, I call it HA. All right. Now, just for a quick sketch, just really quick, we're thinking, hopefully you know your HK is negative 5H, which would be somewhere up here. That's negative 5, 8. All right? And then what you do is you make little crosshairs for these graphs. And then your graph will look something like that and that. I just did a very quick, generic sketch. And so hopefully you can see your vertical asymptote is this one that goes up and down, which it is at negative 5. But is that an x equals negative 5 or a y equals negative 5? And you should know it's an x equals negative 5. And your horizontal is side to side, and that would be an, at 8, and that would be when y is 8. So just be careful that you put the x and y in the right spots and think about it. It helps to make a quick sketch. Without it, it's kind of a little tougher. All righty. So find the restrictions and simplify this rational expression. So first of all, I'm going to simplify, and then I'm going to find restrictions. So to simplify, we have to factor top and factor bottom so that we can hopefully cancel something out. Now for the top, what you're going to do is use grouping. So we're going to take these two groups and um, factor out a GCF. So for the first group, you're going to factor out an x squared. And when you pull out an x squared, you're left with x minus 4. And then for the second group right here, you're going to pull out a 3. So I'm going to put a plus 3. And we pull a 3 out, that's going to be an x minus 4 again. And that is the numerator. For the denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to make this little x thingy. 8 goes on top, negative 6 is on bottom. And the sides here would be, um, what is it, uh, negative 4 and negative 2. So that would mean the bottom's going to be x minus 4 minus 2. All right. Now, usually when you factor, something's going to cancel. And I see these x minus 4s, but the top isn't done quite yet. Don't just start canceling yet. What we need to do on the top is, since these both have x minus 4s, can't we group the first two pieces? Meaning, those two are going to become x squared plus 3, and we have the x minus 4 left over. And on the bottom, we keep the x minus 4, x minus 2. Now, again, the, what we did here, technically, we pulled a GCF of x minus 4 out, leaving the x squared plus 3 left over. OK, now you should notice that the x minus 4s disappear. And we have a simplified version of our function. So what we now have is an x squared plus 3 on top and an x minus 2 on the bottom, and that is a simplified version of the function. Now, next, we want to find the restrictions. The restrictions are when the denominator equals 0. So when we want the denominator equaling 0 is where when does this equal 0 and when does this equal 0. So where does the denominator equal 0? What would make those two pieces equal 0? Well, for this one, the first one, it'll be 4, and for the second one, it'll be 2. All right? What a lot of people mess up with is they ignore this one because they'll go here and look for restrictions. The restrictions are at the original, at the original right here, which is this right here. So both of those are your restrictions. Right here are those restrictions. That means you cannot plug in 4 or 2 into this function. It causes an error. To solve this equation, it's a rational equal a rational. It's called a proportion. And all <coughs> proportions can be solved with something called cross-multiplying. So we are going to multiply across here. That gives us 8 times x minus 5. That's equal to, we multiply, a, oops, we multiply across here, we get 5 times 3x plus 2. 
and now we solve. So to solve, we're going to do a little distributing. It gives us 8x minus 40. That equals, multiply those, 15x plus 10. And then we are going to do some simple solving. So I'm going to minus the 15x over to start with. There's all sorts of different ways of doing that. That leaves you negative 7x minus 40 equals 10. I'm then going to add the 40 over. You might have done it a different way. This is just one way to finish it off. And then I'm going to divide off the negative 7. And I have now x equals negative 50 over 7. You can move that negative out front, onto the top, onto the bottom. Um, that negative doesn't have to stay on the bottom. You can write it in many different ways. That doesn't reduce. So that is your answer. But you better check for if it's a restricted value. Will this value make either denominator zero? No. The restriction for this one is actually negative two-thirds, and that does not make a zero in the denominator. We're okay, our answer is golden. Unless we messed up, then our answer is not good, but hopefully we did it right. To solve this equation, we're going to multiply all pieces, both sides, by both denominators. You could do it by one denominator at a time, but I'm just going to do both all at once. So that would be u minus 3 and u plus 1. This little 1 has to be by it 2. A lot of people forget this one. This is the most mistake people forget is this little 1. So squeeze that in there. And this one right here, again, is u minus 3 and u plus 1. So when we do that, the whole point of doing that is this will cross out with this and this will cross out with this. And we have a new function now. Now, this piece I have to FOIL out. This is where it gets kind of long. When I FOIL that out, I get u squared minus 6u minus 7. All right? Then here, I'm going to FOIL this one as well and multiply by negative 1 in a second, but I'm putting a minus 1 here or a negative the negative, whatever you want, minus 1 or negative. Actually, the, the minus 1 might throw people off. Let's just think of it as a minus. And any, one times anything disappears, the 1. The 1 doesn't change anything. But anyway, so the negative is still there, and we have a u squared minus 2u minus 3 equals, and this last piece, we have to multiply the right side, and we get u squared minus 9. So we multiplied this together, got that, multiplied all this, that negative, that minus is pretty important, I put parentheses are really important here, and then I foiled these together, multiplied these, and I got this. Now we start simplifying and solving. First thing I'm going to do is clean up the left side, and so what I do there, I got u squared minus 6u minus 7, I distribute the negative, a lot of people mess that up and always mess up distributing that negative. It's the biggest mistake people make. Now let's keep cleaning up the left side. The u squares disappear. They, 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 when you combine them, they, they cancel each other out. These two combine to be negative 4u, and these two combine to be negative 4. Got the u squared minus 9. So next, I want to solve this. Well, when I have a squared, this means I have to set it equal to 0 because I have to use factoring or quadratic formula to solve it. So I want to make this equal to 0, and I usually like my squared piece to be positive, so I'm going to move these pieces to the right. So I'm going to add the 4u over, and I'm going to add the 4 over. Those are now gone. So I now have 0 equals u squared plus 4u, and these two combine to give us negative 5. All righty, we're getting close. We now have to finish solving this. So I'm going to factor. That's our technique, uh, one technique to solve. And when we do that, we get 5 and negative 1. So I have 0 equals u plus 5 and u minus 1. Okay. So what would make this equal to 0 
is what makes this factor equal to zero and what makes this factor equal to zero. And hopefully you see that your answers are negative five and one. Those are your two values that would make this equal to zero. Now, check to make sure neither of those are extraneous, meaning are part of the restricted values. When you put negative five into either denominator, you do not create a zero. When you put one into either denominator, you do not create a zero, so these answers are okay. Make sure you check to make sure that these are not extraneous.